Welcome back to the show, everybody. IGN Live at Gamescom 2016. You know, usually we're showing you games that you can play later this year, next year. How about a game you can play right now? Etienne and Genevieve are here to show us Deus Ex Go, which is available now on mobile. Right. It came out yesterday, actually, yeah. on August 18th. Um, going really well so far. Really yeah. happy with the reception. I think uh, we've already uh, reviewed the game and gave it a great review. Yeah, 8.4. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> this is the... Uh, we're going to take a look at some... Uh, Gameplay here or yeah, the trailer? Yeah, the trailer is gotcha. really uh, But this, this is the third in the Go trilogy. Right. After Hitman Go, Lara Croft Go. These are really, really smart and clever uh, translations of big AAA games into the mobile space. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, that's kind of been our studio motto, right? We're a super tiny studio. Well, super tiny for a square studio, yeah. you would expect. Um, right now, I think we're at 37 people, um, and we like to keep a very... Uh, tight approach to the way we build games. So always sh small teams of five to eight yeah. people, and we then start, we scale. We start really small, and then yeah. we scale up when, when the project has to ship, basically. Yeah. But usually a project starts with like two or three people prototyping, finding the core of the game, finding the creative direction, and all of that. And it's one of the things that we try to bring to these mobile games is having something that translates the core franchise points of something like DSX, yeah. but makes it in a way that's really fun to play on mobile, which uh, isn't always a one-to-one -one translation, right? Yeah, this exactly. is a turn-based puzzle game. Yeah. It's nothing like playing a first-person shooter, sure. but when you play it, you still get the same things. You, you still get the, the same feeling of Jensen infiltrating places using his yeah. augmentations and hacking his way through, right? Yeah, with the Go games, it seems like you just you boil the games down to just their very basic essence. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that was the case. Uh, the first game we released was Hitman Go, yeah. um, and it was kind of the most unexpected treatment that yeah. people kind of um, took right off the bat when we announced it. They were like, oh, what is this? It's such a strange approach to bringing Hitman to mm -hmm. mobile because the most obvious way would have been to do a thumbstick kind yeah, of sure. uh, third-person approach. Um, but so far, I mean, again, as you said, it distillating the formula of every single franchise and the down to its core essence has been um, our core focus. And Hitman Go, if you compare it to Dice X Go, it's kind of closer in terms of approach. Yeah, it's a bit closer. The, the games, uh, I'd say, like Hitman and Dice X have a little bit more in common than like Dice X and Tomb Raider. Yeah, have. probably, yeah. Uh, it's more of a... a it, it has that puzzle element where you look at a, a big room with like 17 guards and turrets and mm -hmm. computers and you're figuring out when you when you play Mankind Divided, you're figuring out what am I going to do with my tool, my, my skill set right here. Uh, am I going to kill everybody? Am I going like, to sneak kill past? Everybody. Yeah, you can do either. <laughs> um, but um, that's a bit more similar to what you see in a game like Hitman. Yeah. Uh, so the game itself, like because we draw uh, inspiration from the SX, feels very different to play like with Tomb Raider Go, uh, Lara Croft Go felt like because uh, there's that adventure feel, that discovery feel in, mm -hmm. a, in a Tomb Raider game that you don't really have the same way in the sex. But what you do get in the sex is a really strong narrative based on conspiracies and that near future kind of dystopia mm -hmm. where um, the Illumina Illuminati try to control everyone. And right. that's something we try to bring back also in the sex that we didn't really have in the other Go games. It's trying to bring a level of, uh, of narrative to pay kind of a homage to that side of Deus Ex. Of the I see. So what were the, the basic core elements of Deus Ex that you found that you brought to Go? Uh, basically, uh, the hacking, the augmentations, like infiltration feel of the game, but also the narrative and the universe. Uh, these are the things that we always went back to when thinking about how best to translate the franchise. Mm. So if we weren't sure about how to create a game mechanic or how to implement it, we always went back to looking at the, at the AAA game or at the even uh, we even used like the first DSX game as, as reference sometimes to see like, what would Denton do? What would Jensen yeah. do? How would they go about doing uh, this or that? And this drives the whole production, basically, to make sure that when people play it, even if it's completely different, you still get that same yeah. feeling. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we're playing as Adam Jensen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what's our goal on every level? Get to the end. <laughs> uh, Just get yeah, through. at the core of it, it's still like th the first goal of, of these games is to create a strong puzzle game. So mm -hmm. that's something that I is the through line, basically, um, for all of these games. The idea here is uh, it takes place just before Mankind Divided. Okay. So it's the same situation for Jensen. Uh, he's in the Task Force 29. 
uh, he's there undercover with uh, the collective, a group of hackers that mm. try to discover the, th the truth about the Illuminati and all of that. So Jensen is actually on a counter-terrorist unit and the story of the game starts where um, one of the billionaires who made a lot of money making augmentations before the crash of human revolution, uh, the AUG incident, mm -hmm. uh, this guy is taken hostage in his own mansion and Jensen is dispatched there to save him. Yeah, so you're adding more narrative mm -hmm. to this game than we saw in previous Go games. Absolutely, oh, yeah. it's such a core pillar of yeah. a DSX game that we basically spend a lot of time trying to make the best version of a narrative that we could fit elegantly like the rest of the mechanics in a Go game. Mm. So you see these lines of dialogue, basically the whole narrative is driven through Jensen speaking with Miller and Vega mm. and the bad guy eventually maybe. Yeah. Um, it was it a challenge though because you don't want to shove too much text in people's mm. faces sure. or you want to find the best way to convey a story where mm -hmm. before Go games were literally about nonverbal mm -hmm. storytelling, but we could not skip it as Etienne was saying. It's mm -hmm. such a prior theory in terms of brand and mm -hmm. franchise and, and universe, so. It's also an opportunity to do something different than the sure. other Go games. Yeah. We, just we don't just want to do the same thing exactly. again and again. Yeah. Uh, and we think like people will get the feel, uh, like they're, they're going to recognize their, if they like the franchise, if they know Jensen, if they know all of these characters, they're, they're going to recognize them because that's something that we were really um, adamant about is talking with the Eidos, uh, the Eidos team the whole way through mm. to make sure we had a product that matched their universe and that's something that, that was really important both for the Go franchise but specifically this title with the narrative and mm. all of that. And they've been so excited for yeah. it too. When yeah. we first started working on Hitman Go, uh, GF Zuga, the executive director on Day Sex Mankind Divided and Day Sex overall, <laughs> yeah. kind of reached out to us and he's like, oh, so when are you going to make our yeah. game into so a Go Do you have all game? these studios now coming to you guys and like, let's do a Go <laughs> version of <laughs> our after game? I, like, to be honest, after Hit, uh, after Hitman Go, everybody was kind of like, ooh, yeah. this mm. is interesting. I mean, it works really well. Like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's worked three times now. So. Yeah, um, surprisingly, <laughs> and uh, not surprisingly, that's a terrible <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> surprisingly. It's a, nice, a pleasant surprise. <laughs> no, um, it was a surprise I think for the players, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's also sure. because we always make sure to approach each game very differently. Um, and I think p people recognize that. Mm. It's not just kind of a reheated version of the Go concept. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, the game also ties into Mankind Divided right. somehow. Can you tell us about that? Um, so uh, for, uh, for uh, the people who complete certain achievements in the game, uh, it's pretty well um, shown in the yeah. menu. You can there's unlock five there's practice yeah, kits. Yeah. Different achievements that will unlock practice kits uh, for okay. um, Jensen in Mankind Divided on Xbox and, and PC, PC, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where you just kind of your account and you get some more skill points. Yeah. That's a nice, nice little perk. Nice little no, yeah. And the, the overall um, journey with IDOS has been wonderful. This mm. is just an example of how we've worked together, but mm. our two offices are actually three blocks away. So we okay. made sure all the way through mm. production that they were aware of how the game was coming along and we showed everything to them and we worked From really the first closely. prototype, yeah, they yeah. played yeah. it and they were like, oh, it's really they were cool. big it feels fans, like yeah. this hex and all of that. Nice. But, and they always had some like pointers like, mm. oh, this isn't something that would really happen in this universe. Maybe mm. you can do this or that instead. Yeah, yeah. And we'll work with that uh, in order to bring the product to its highest possible uh, quality. Mm. And they're going to keep on being involved, right? Because one of the, again, big differences with the other Go games is we're bringing kind of, um, we're fixing a challenge we were working with in the past, mm -hmm. which was people were tackling the Go games and then completing them. And then after four or five hours, they ran out of content. And yeah. we were like, oh, we just finished it. Um, and so now we're coming up with a uh, level editor that's going right. to come out a few, uh, few months after launch. Mm -hmm. um, and they're still going to co collaborate with us. Yeah. Um, if you log in right now into the game, you have weekly live puzzles. Yeah. Every uh, so week we submit, like yeah. on the server, we submit five new puzzles that unlock every day of the week. Mm. And it goes from Monday being kind of easy uh, and Friday being really hardcore. Uh, but they usually center on a, on a theme, like this week is using the EMP robots and the, and the rotating nodes. And using puzzle around this theme, we create something that we couldn't really fit in the story in a nice way, because it's more like, they're more theoretical puzzle, they're mm. more focused on game mechanics instead of narrative. So it's something that we really, it helps us create more puzzle, but it's also cool for people who actually wanted more of a challenge on Lara Croft Go, yeah. something harder and something to grind your teeth on. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, we upped the difficulty level. Yeah, really. <laughs> a little bit. Oof. 
Nice. <laughs> well, the game is out now. It yep. seems yep. to be yet another success for you guys. So congratulations Thank there. Thank you. Thank you. I have a uh, long flight back to San Francisco tomorrow, so maybe I'll play some mm. DSX Go. Perfect <laughs> <on the laughs> <plane. laughs> opportunity. Yeah. Thanks for coming by the show. Thank Thanks you for so having much. us. Uh, we're just about near the end of our long journey here at Gamescom 2016, but we still have just a little bit more to show you after this.